With 4 million sounds, what will you create? Take the free trial today. Hello and welcome to a little, I, I guess this is a Sonic Lab special because it's not quite Superbooth because Superbooth is done and dusted, but we're actually here, uh, well, we're virtually with uh, Tony Rolando who's in uh, Northville, Ash uh, Asheville, North Carolina with uh, Make Noise Systems. How are you, Tony? You good? I'm hanging in there. Excellent. Well, always nice to see you. So um, you had something that you were going to be releasing for Superbooth, but now... Now you've got it. Um, it didn't quite make the make make the deadline, right? Exactly. Uh, in fact, we were going to be launching this uh, well before Superbooth. It was supposed to launch in February. Okay. Well, um, so what are we looking at? Well, we're looking at the Make Noise Zero Control. The Make Noise Zero Control is a patchable, clockable controller and step sequencer for voltage-controlled synthesizer systems. Uh, we designed it to be patch pals with the Zero Coast. It's a tabletop device whose inputs and outputs follow the Eurorack standards. Uh, it also making it a great partner for any other modular system or uh, patchable, voltage-controlled synthesizer. Oh, neat. And it looks very much like uh, the, the Zero Coast or the No Coast. I never, what, what, how am I, spo am I supposed to say it? Is it Zero Coast, No Coast? Which one is it? <laughs> it's all of them, actually. That was part of the fun. We, we thought it would be fun. No Coast, O Coast, Zero Coast. I guess technically on the uh, faceplate it does say Zero Coast, but I kind of thought it would be fun if people could have different names for it. Absolutely. So um, what does the, um, what does the Zero Control or the No Control, Zero Control, I guess, what does it do? Uh, well, it's a sequencer and controller. It's fully analog. There's no menus or modes. What you see is what you get. And uh, I'm going to switch over to the overhead cam again. Right. Uh, so it's, uh, it has voltage control for your pitch. That's this top row here. The strength of the signal, or I guess you say like uh, loudness or amplitude. And then also there's a, a row here for time. And the result is that you have sequences that are not quite as, as uh, rigid as you would typically expect from a step sequencer. Things can speed up and slow down and also change in amplitude um, per step, per note. So here's a quick audio example. In this audio example, I'm making use of all of those things. I'm, I'm obviously controlling the pitch, and I'm doing that with this top row of knobs. But then I'm also controlling the strength of the sound. And if you listen, you can hear where some of these notes are a lot quieter or not playing at all. For example, uh, this step seven is being skipped. Uh, step eight is just barely turning on. And then in addition to that, I'm sequencing time. So. You'll see where I come to step four here. It pauses for a bit, uh, and time is longer than it is on the other steps. Uh, and then when you get to step seven and eight, time is actually faster than the other steps. And this is something that uh, I first learned about with the uh, the Bupla 248, the MARF, the Multiple yeah. Arbitrary Function Generator. Um, had that wonderful capability of not just sequencing the pitch but also the time and and i find that that makes analog sequencing or step sequencing i should i should say i find it gives it quite a bit more of a of a flow an organic flow it kind of takes you places you don't usually go yeah it's with, quite uh, it's quite sequencing. sort of meta isn't it it's a sequencing a sequence of sequencing itself <laughs> in exactly. a kind of weird way yeah yes 100 percent. yeah exactly so um, what's, what, are there, is there any kind of quantization of those signals, particularly with the pitch, I'm guessing? No, the, uh, it's, uh, it's fully analog. There's, uh, there's no, nothing digital about it. Um, when we started developing it, there was the thought of doing quantization and such. Uh, but with the Zero Coast, which it was developed, um, it was developed to be a partner with the Zero Coast, we already had the quantized voltage control via MIDI on the Zero Coast, so we really wanted to give this a more analog feel, something different than you would typically get from a tabletop device. 
um, it's really not hard to use at all. Uh, I've been using it a bunch with Ableton Live and just tuning by ear. Another thing that's happened to me quite often is I'll have something that's so harmonically rich that when I've tried to play the Zero Coast over MIDI along with what I've already recorded, I can't quite get the notes right. And that's where I've turned to the Zero Control to tune by ear these notes so that they fit better with the source material. And yeah. it's surprising how often that happens. So um, take me through, because we've got touch pads on there as well, right? Yes. So, uh, and when you hit that, I mean, I'm guessing, do do the three rows of sequences, do they have to be pitch? Are they just basically control voltages that you could map, you could pitch any, you could patch anywhere, essentially? Well, yeah, so I'm going to switch back over here. Along the top here, we have three CV outputs, and these three rows, pitch, strength, and time, are also uh, output up here at the top. So you could potentially use those to sequence anything else that you want to. Um, it doesn't have to sequence time either. So for example, I have a, an attenuator here for time. If I turn this all the way down, I'm not going to get any sequencing of time. Ah, uh, okay. And the same can be true of strength. So for example, I could just patch a static voltage here to strength, and I'm going to use the zero codes for that. And now I just have all notes at the same level. Right, and okay. And you can hear, it starts to sound a lot more what you would expect to come from a step sequencer. Right, yeah, I see what you mean. So the 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 pads on, on it as well, they can be used just to trigger the voltages and the controls for each absolutely. of the steps as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we have uh, the eight step pads, and then we have three pads over here that are used for interfacing with the sequencer. So, for example, I'm going to remove those patches I just made. I can, uh, I can interrupt the sequence. And you can hear how the clock rate is different on these, so... Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Now I can also set it up so I'm not interrupting the sequence. If I turn off interrupt, I can do that. And what's neat about that is it allows me to use the touch place to control other things. Up here at the top, I have a pressure out and a touch gate out. I could, for example, patch the pressure out here to control... Oh, we'll do like... I'll use the touch gate. I'll use that to send some FM here and there. envelope which we can get to in a minute here and I can have it set up so that I can also open the uh, the dynamic VCA by pressure and if I turn on or interrupt back on then I'm going to stop the sequence at that step and do that same thing that I just did Cool. So does the sequencer always have to be running or can you just have it as a sort of static controller as well? It's exactly, yeah. So yeah, it doesn't have to be running at all times. I've got a pad here to turn the clock on and off. And then when I'm not using that, when I'm not using that internal clock, if I have interrupt turned on, I can uh, select all the different steps individually by hand. Right. Um, and then I also have here these touch plates next to it. We've talked about interrupt and the clock on off. I also have a direction, a direction uh, touch plate here. I do have direction patch to be modulated on and off. Yeah, it's going left and right, isn't it? It's just going, it's looping yeah. on. So I can do that by hand here too.
So is that repeat when you're pressing the uh, the pad? Is the repeat de defined by the master clock and then the time parameter? So you can get can you get quite fast ratchety stuff as well? Yeah, it's defined exactly. It's defined by the master clock. So on steps where I have uh, the clock running slower, it's going to repeat slower. Steps where I have the clock running faster, it's going to repeat faster. Interesting. Complete the quick little demo here. We've got an external clock input, which is useful for synchronizing with other other devices. We have a clock output for the internal clock, and then we also have uh, the dynamic reset. Uh, what's kind of fun about that is the touch plate select the step that it resets to, and this is something that harkens back to the Serge TKB. Uh, being able to reset to a step other than just step one. That can be very fun for doing things like this. If we patch, say, step one to the reset. I can change the sequence length. So dynamically on the fly, okay, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then after that, we have the stop input. And it operates the same similar way. It just stops whenever it gets to the step that you have patched. And I should uh, backtrack just a little bit here and note that we have a gate output for each step. And the way that you make use of these re uh, dynamic reset, the stop, and the direction is by patching these gates to those uh, destinations. We've included uh, with the Zero Control some stack cables provided to us by Modular Addict. And those can be used so that you could perhaps put more than one gate to a destination, or you could perhaps use one uh, destination with uh, multiple gates or send a gate to more than one destination. So for example, we could use steps one and steps eight to the direction parameter. I'm actually going to use the stacker here. And we can create the classic uh, Knight Rider effect. Just like you saw on the kick car in Knight Rider. Oh, yeah. The that LED effect. effect, right? I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and so that's one of the reasons why we put the stack cables in with the cable pack, is so you can do tricks like that. Another thing you might want to do is you might want to send this gate from step from step one to a destination outside of the zero control. And so, for example, maybe you want that one step to trigger an envelope. Right. So you could kind of create a sort of uh, t timbral or, or the accents, I guess, on that by using exactly. that as well. Right. right. Yeah. So, and that kind of harkens back again to the uh, the booklet, the early booklet instruments, where you have the gate out per step. It's highly useful for making each note or step in a sequence have some different set of events associated with it. So when it gets to that step, that gate out can trigger a function generator or maybe turn on a VCA, open up a VCA that allows a, a modulator to escape out into the rest of the patch. And that one note could potentially sound quite different than the note that's produced for step two. Oh, neat, okay. So it's, in many ways, it's making the, the no coast more coast. <laughs> if, if, if yeah, if that I guess makes you sense. could say it's making the no coast more west coast potentially. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even more. So, um, tell me, Tony. What um, you say you're 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 able to actually uh, create these now. You know, you, you've got your supply chain kind of sort. What's the what, what's it going to cost, and when? Where are people going to be able to get it, and how much, and all that kind of good stuff? Well, it's looking like it's going to retail at three ninety nine. And we're building them at this moment. We actually have our, our uh, production staff is operating right now. Um, 
They're, of course, taking safety precautions. We have, uh, they're distanced. Everybody in the shop is wearing a mask. I'm not wearing a mask at the moment because I'm being interviewed by you and I thought it would be hard for you to understand me talking with a mask on. Um, but they're down there working. Uh, we're a little short staffed just because we wanted to keep their pro you know, production a little bit more spacious. So it's gonna take us a little longer than usual, but we're hoping that in the next two, three weeks, we can start shipping some out to our dealers. Excellent. And um, what uh, is it, it? Is it Mac mountable in uh, Eurac or is it purely desktop or what's the? It's desktop. Uh, right. My main reason for that being that it, it's kind of large, and my thought was at three ninety nine, you're getting it. It's already powered. Um, yeah. I don't know. I felt like it would take up quite a bit of space in someone's case. So I, I, I feel I feel like having it on the desk is potentially. Um, Nice. So you can make room for your other fun modules, your Mimia phone or your, your, uh, your, uh, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat, I suppose. Absolutely. Tony, that's great. Whatever so floats um, your skiff, Nick. Whatever whatever floats, floats, your skiff. Uh, floats your skiff. Well, a skiff, <laughs> skiff, boat, whatever. We'll, we'll stick with it. Uh, Tony, I'm really looking forward to being able to kind of uh, seeing you in person sometime in the not too distant future. And uh, it's great that you, we were able to make this happen remotely anyway. So that's great. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, no, I look forward to seeing you in, in, uh, in person as well. So it's, it's a little more fun, a little easier. Um, if I could just have one moment to shout out our, our crew that's, that's, that's building these right now, we really appreciate them coming in. Um, we've got, we've got uh, Mike, Jake, and John down there working today. And then uh, later this week, we'll also have uh, Rodent in their building. And then our uh, shipping person, Meg, is coming in to, uh, to get these shipped out. We really appreciate that. Uh, without them, you know, we might not still be in business. Yeah, well, everybody's doing doing what they can to kind of get through this, but uh, hopefully the end is in sight and we can all get back to normal or some kind of normal sometime soon. Oh, yeah, we will. Tony, thank you very much. Yeah. Take care, Nick.